All right, I want to do a quick uh, little video of this uh, 2003 Vulcan Voyager Classic. Did a front bevel bearing, first time ever touching a cruiser or anything other than a sport bike. Um, bike been at a few shops, and I guess nobody wanted to do the job. It's a pretty big job, and customer finally contact me through other friends of with sport bikes who I worked on and I decided to take the job on. Um, real quick on it, well, is um, this is the be bevel, front bevel gear with all the exposure, everything underneath the bevel gear. As you can see, I took the rear swing arm off and the you know to get the drive shaft off never did it before so I, i'm sure i probably took more stuff off than than i probably needed to but um, i'm making a video because prior to this project i couldn't get um, i didn't find any videos I only saw videos of people talking about everything they went through but i never saw any pictures or what it looks like in detail so i said i'll make a video I took the gas tank off, the exhaust off, rear wheel off, you know, to expose um, everything. You know, I had to take the, the shaft off, so the exhaust have to come off in order to get the shaft for the swing arm off. And uh, and just pretty much bagged and labeled everything to, to so I can keep up with everything. Uh, here's the old bad bearing that was in there. And as you can see in here, that old bearing is very bad very bad i mean i mean it should not be moving in and out like that whatsoever that's terribly bad here's the new baron new brand new baron that's going to go back in perfect not moving in and out at all and it's in perfect shape as you can see whenever you do do a, a breakdown on it you're going to get a lot of metal uh, from the baron just worn i mean you can see that uh very burnt up and it's just completely more up. You can even hear it rattling. So inside the the housing, I've I've got it out already. I actually stopped because I get to rolling and uh, keep going. But when the bearing got so bad, the hold down bracket that actually holds it uh, it uh, moves in and out. That it was actually pushing the um, the bevel shaft into the housing. It rubbed it, uh, you know. A tad bit if you you can see up in there it uh it rubbed it a little bit and grooved it but it's not enough to affect the affect the performance of the bike or uh, need a wear of um need that replaced and as you can see the bevel bearing itself took a groove from rub up in rubbing up into the uh the housing due to the bad bearing so this is it here this is the bevel bearing you can see it's spring loaded there and you know it's gonna push out into that, but but as you can see, I labeled a lot of the wires because it got two rectifiers, and the ends look the same, and um, the end looks the same. So I labeled everything on that harness for that rectifier, and that harness on that rectifier. And um, videos I saw, a guy said it took him about ten hours to break it down, ten hours to put it back, and uh, it's uh, it's. Few minutes before 4 a.m. and I probably started this job a little after midnight, and so maybe four, four and a half hours or something like that. Maybe not quite. It wasn't quite midnight when I got started on it, and and I was able to break it down like this here, and and in four hours, let's say four and a half hours, and to put that bearing back in, you know, to clean it all up, obviously, and I got new bearings and I got the new boot new other bearings of uh, the cap for um if you ever take yours off you'll see i got the cap for the housing exposed the nut we got the uh, spring for the for the new boot and um uh, and uh, we got other bearings for the rear end you know just to just in case we decide to replace the bearings for the rear end and of course the new seal all oem parts you know all oem parts so uh pretty pretty bike too it was pretty custom i think every piece of chrome that they can put on here is on here every piece of chrome cover you can name you know is is on here so somebody got a really nice bike and and actually put a lot of time and effort into making it look a look look their own so 
Um, so we're going to end the night with this because um, I, I, I tore it all down and I know where we stand putting it back together. Obviously, it goes slower than taking it apart because you want to be precise and, and get everything in, in place. But, um, you know, um, I know I took a uh, center stand here and uh, I had to take the rear uh, engine mount bolt out, which is this long bolt here. I had to take that out and then lift it up to get clearance to get that bottom bolt out to be able to get that housing out and to be able to do it. So that had to come out. I had to move the air box a tad bit and the breather, move it out the way so I can the, the motor can raise up and uh, get that clearance to get it out. You don't have to remove the motor. As you can see, if you read some projects, you do not have to remove the motor to take the front bevel housing off a Vulcan Vargin or in my understanding from what I read, any of the uh, ones that got the drive shaft. And I'm mechanically inclined, however, this is the first time I've ever did a job like this here. Sport bikes, of course, you know, you, you talk sport bikes, I've done plenty of sport bikes. But when it comes to these cruisers, never ever, but can't get inclined walking the park. Um, gas tank wasn't no issue to get off. Uh, rear swing going, drive shaft, exhaust definitely wasn't no issue to get off. It was a simple to get off. Four bolts holding in the front, holding to the motor, and one bolt holding to that uh, rear head bracket back there. Um, so, all right, we're going to get a part two. This is part one, and uh, we'll give a part two. Actually, this should have been part two. <laughs> Part one should have just been a walk around, but you know, we got still pictures of the bike when it was that way. So I'll give another close up of what you guys will see, you know, internally on these motors. If you never saw it, this is what it looks like internally on those motors when you take the front bevel housing off. And as you can see, everything's still on there. Uh, one of the pains I had though, I'll tell you this right quick was to get this shift lever shift linkage off. This shift linkage off that uh the shift shaft there, that was more so of a pain. Once I got the all the bolts all got off, that was kind of a pain, you know, the to, to bend it in and, and to flex it to get it off. But um, I conquered and I will conquer and succeed getting it back on there. So definitely gonna do an engine flush a couple of times to get all the the all the debris out of it and the strainer because it has a strainer behind the the plug there too. I saw that it's a strain in there, so I'm gonna run some flush, put some cheaper oil in it, uh, put probably some conventional oil, some mix some synthetic or something with a uh, with conventional, some cheap, so I can run it through and put a couple miles on it to flush it back out to get it all rinsed through. However, I know it's a pretty long video, but um, yeah, flip this bevel housing over so you can see exactly what it looked like when it's on the bike. So you'll see that on the bike. And it'll fit this way. This part got the. This part is where the bearing will go in. It'll center inside there, which will go the, up through the bottom. And this part here is where the uh, hydraulic clutch um, cylinder is to push the clutch in. This side here is where the dry shaft assembly is going to bolt to. So, just to give you an idea of what it'll be and look like. And here you go again. Here's your your tambourine bearing. That's bad. And my understanding is. Um, the symptoms of the front bevel bearing going bad is uh, you ride it and as soon as you let off the gas, you hear squealing or you feel it shaking, vibrating, or it feels just unnormal once you let off the gas. Obviously, when you're on the gas, it's holding with the you know with the torque of the motor, but when you let off the gas, that's when you start getting a little play. So, okay, this is a long video for you guys. I know we're watching on the internet and things like that. We don't sit too long on videos, but hey. I hope this is informational because I tell you what, I didn't find a single video expressing, talking, or showing in depth or detail, no word, nearly close as this. So here it is, a 2003 Vulcan Voyager, I think it's a 1500, and uh, all torn apart, and I'm mechanically inclined, but you can do it. If you got the tools, you can do it, and I tell you what, I don't even think I went, I had a 12, 12, a 10. Uh, I think we use a 14 on some of the the uh, the shocks up here and 17s on the axle and a 12 socket. So we use a 12, 10, 14, and 17, 
and uh, a 32 for the center bolt. It has a center bolt here, which I use the impact to take it out. And I use a, I think it was a 32, yeah, a 32 millimeter to take that front bolt off there. Other than that, man, that's all That's all you need. You got the 12, 14, 10, 17. I, if I missed something, I apologize, but I know 10, 12, 14, and 17 millimeter, you're definitely gonna need. So, um, you know, hope this helped you in the future because uh, we like helping people. All right, have a good one. And again, this is uh, the, the little video for the Vulcan Voyager front bevel bearing replacement Bring, taking removing the front bevel housing and here it at gordon cycle parts and we i think we're making history gordon cycle parts that's what we do